So check this out. Strange things are once again happening in the PC industry. It's probably just the way things are going to be because, well, it's the PC industry. It's full of drama. It's full of crazy stuff always going on. So first up, it seems like even though everybody waited for Navi, you know, everybody sat with their fingers crossed and we were all like hoping it was going to be the next coming of Christ, you know, when it came to video cards. I mean, a lot of people knew that it was probably only going to be, you know, mid range, but you know, really is Navi dead on arrival? I mean, is it dead on arrival? I mean, I mean, it's 499 and since Nvidia has released the super cards, um, well, does that kind of make it like almost irrelevant right out the door? And, and if so, I mean, I know that's kind of really kind of sad for AMD because they're like, hey, hurrah, we've got Navi. We've come to save you all from the demons at NVIDIA, those evil horny devils. But nope, it arrived, at least on paper, 499, and it was supposed to, you know, be able to keep up, you know, with so probably maybe even a 2070, right? Well, okay. Well, so now the 2070 Super is here. It's going to beat it. So out of the water, it's kind of weird. Now, a lot of people are kind of going crazy about these super cards. You know, they're complaining about the price and everything else. But for me, the 2060 Super at $399 is a good deal. I'll tell you why. You can get mad. When the 1080 was out, it was $499 originally for the card. And people are going to go, oh my God, you know, price, price, price. So let's take one thing into consideration right off the bat. It's called inflation. So things are definitely going up. We all saw that with the 2080 Ti where it's priced at like $1,500, you know, which is what, you know, Titan cards and all the super duper, you know, basically workstation slash, you know, gaming cards are priced at and Nvidia like basically up the ante, which I thought was a pretty kind of, you know, messed up thing to, to do, you know, it kind of really changed the whole gaming parameter because like here's a card that's like more expensive than most people are actually investing in their systems and we've talked about this lots of times people who are in poor countries and stuff they don't have the cash to go out and buy these super duper expensive systems they just don't so this card being 399 dollars it's faster than a 1080 cooler than a 1080 it does have all the ray tracing features and all that stuff in it you know, so I think that that particular card is a solid card for $399. Now, the 20, 2070 Super, we all know why it's here. It's only here to counter Navi and basically biot slap AMD as soon as they had a release. So it's like, you know, AMD had like this giant like presidential party saying, we won the election. And then everybody's like, um, no, we just retallied the votes. And guess what? Well, you didn't win. That's kind of almost what it is, you know, <laughs> kind of a political slap in the face there. Which leads me to the next part of, of today's like news story. So currently, right now, there are only nine games on the market right now that are supporting RTX, which really isn't a lot. Nine games, let's just face it, nine, you know, it's, it's there, but it's not a whole lot of games. But there are other things like control that's coming out that's going to support different features and we're finally going to actually see some game developers that are actually developing their games from the ground up using ray tracing features and making it a core element of the game. Now Stay in the Light is going to be, like I said, the very first game that from the ground up will have all the RTX features in it. It's going to be a core element of the game. So far what we've really seen for the ray tracing stuff has really been just eye candy. You know, a lot of reflections. Hey, you guys have said it a bunch of times. It's a bunch of shiny stuff. But now that a game developer is going to be doing this from the ground up, um, this should change things quite a bit. And although this guy is just a single guy, this is like one guy doing this developing, it's still going to be, you know, a new trend. And we're also seeing other games that have Vulcan in them, you know, such as Doom Eternal and stuff that support Vulcan. And this was announced that it also supports ray tracing. And, you know, I don't even know if really NVIDIA was really even aware that this was actually happening, but people are starting to pick up on the ray tracing stuff in the industry. It's starting to get picked up. Yes, it's been a while. When the cards first came out, yeah, they were overly priced. We all know this. It's, you know, it's just the way things are, you know, but now we do see the prices going down. So you can get yourself a 2070 Super 
which is going to be a pretty dang fast card. It's going to play almost everything out there. And everybody knows pretty much that 4K gaming is just BS anyway. So who really cares? You're, you're talking 1080, 1440 in that particular area. So that should do good. Now, when Navi gets here, I'm really hoping that Navi has really good numbers and that maybe the first car that we're going to see, you know, that's coming out in the market, this 5700, maybe that'll just be like the entry level that we're going to see. Hopefully, maybe we'll see some higher end cards from that because just coming out with a card you know and making a big who you do about it and then only competing in kind of the mid-range and then getting kind of smacked right after that i don't know it i don't know that's kind of a weird situation i think really that amd needs to kind of step back and choose an area where they want to compete like they're doing very well against intel on the cpu side of things on the GPU side of things though, it's almost like they're just hanging in there because there's no other fighter to really fight the fight with NVIDIA. And since, you know, you really can't have anybody having a monopoly here, it's like they kind of have to exist by law. Now, by the law of nature, should that really happen? Because the law of nature is really this. I mean, if you go to the African plains and you go watch animals when they need to eat, they eat another animal. They do whatever they need to do to survive survival of the fittest it's the way nature's been going on forever so i mean if nvidia really can though make better cards and not have anybody to compete with the only thing that really kind of sucks is that then they can go really crazy on pricing because there's nobody else there to compete with them so it's kind of a really weird thing the way the laws are set up here in america it's like according to nature it should be survival of the fittest but the way the law is here you can't have that you have to have competition like even for newer tvs you can't bring your brand new TV. So let's just say today that me and the camera genius come with this great TV idea, blows everything out of the water. We can sell it for cheaper. We want to bring it here. The first thing that we're going to run into is, well, we have all these TVs that are already here that we need to sell that we've brought and paid for. So until we actually sell these TVs, you guys can't bring your TV even in here. So it's kind of a weird market because it really is no longer survival of the fittest. It's just not that way at all. It's about marketing, strategy, planning, business, corporate BS all over the place. So it's really kind of crazy. Now, another thing I want to talk to you guys about is like people are like going crazy about, you know, the price of Stadia. You know, they're like, oh my God, it's going to be this much money. But you got to understand something that the PC industry is an entertainment industry. Everybody wants to be entertained. George Carlin said it, you know, the only reason you're even here on this planet is to be entertained. That's why you're here. So as long as you're not like hurting anybody, you should really try to entertain yourself as much as possible. So that industry is always going to be there and they're always going to be charging you. They're going to get you coming or going. So you're either going to be play, paying money in the gaming industry, you're going to be paying high money to have yourself a really super duper high-end gaming computer to play all these games, or you're going to be paying monthly service fees to somebody to be able to stream all of their games. Now, it's kind of a mixed bag. I mean, in the future, when all these games are online, you can play any game you want on some little cheap-ass little thing because everything's done online. I mean, you've got to admit that's going to be kind of cool, but you're going to be paying for this hardware either way. So instead of going out right off the bat and just paying for this computer that's two or $3,000 to play your games, well, now you're going to be probably paying some $30 or $40 a month fee, you know, like paying, a, like paying for your electricity or everything else just to be entertained and to be a gamer. So either way, you're going to get stuck paying for your entertainment. It's either one way or the other. High-end equipment or high fees every month. There's just no way out of it. So people think, oh, well, you know, the state is going to come. The gaming industry is going to be like totally changed. Yes, I think it will change quite a bit because a lot of people who don't have a whole lot of money up front, but who work and can afford, you know, at least a monthly fee, you know, that'll be cool. Now, what I really hope, though, is with this stuff is that it's more of a sliding scale stuff because I don't feel that a person who is like India or Indonesia or any of these companies that don't have the same dollar rate as we do should have to be paying the same amount of a monthly fee. I mean, everybody knows that, you know, America, Europe, these countries have more money. So these countries should obviously be paying more for the service fee. And the countries that don't have that much money shouldn't have to be paying that much money for it. It should work on a sliding scale where like, if they know this particular reason, region, you know, cannot afford, you know, $30 a month, these people can only afford $2 a month. Well, they should only have to pay two dollars a month because they're making their money anyways and everything's going to be online so 
Like always, I wanna hear what you guys have to say. So right off the bat, first thing we talked about, Navi. Do you guys think that it's dead upon arrival? I kind of do. I was really looking for something better. I know it was going to be mid-end, you know, so I don't, you know, maybe I shouldn't have had such high expectations and maybe that's my fault. But I think a lot of you felt the same way. Also, we all know that RTX came out, the cards were overpriced, yada, yada, yada. It's already been said, done, sliced up and breaded up and cooked every which way that you can do it more ways than chicken. So like now we just have to decide, okay, you know, when is RTX going to be viable. Now that the cards are getting there, you know that you can get a nice car for $399 that's faster than a 1080, which was like the second, you know, fastest car a couple of years ago. That's still not too bad. What do you guys feel about that? Do you guys still feel that like RTX is a complete ripoff? You don't want to buy the Nvidia cards or you feel that, hey, you know, since the cards are coming lower and there are more technologies coming that, you know, these cards and the technology will be more viable. And last but not least, do you agree with me that no matter what's going on in the gaming industry, you're going to be getting charged one way or the other you're either going to be paying big money to like have all of your equipment in your house so you can run every game that you have which is a lot of upfront investment money which means coming up with a lot of cash at one time or do you think it's cool to have to pay this monthly service fee and do you agree with me that the scale should slide according to how people can afford it even though i'm probably living in a pipe dream with that i just think that's how it should be i'm mark i thank you guys for watching tech of tomorrow we'll see you guys back in the channel lots more stuff got some headphones top five comes stuff coming up next week and um obviously you guys know well we got more super coming we'll see what it's all about